We'd like to talk about the history of the lynx uh, and the habitat that it's quite likely that it used to occupy historically. I'm here with Tom Lord, archaeologist and farmer. So what have you got to show us, Tom? Well, evidence of lynx in Britain is actually very rare. And at present, it's confined to bones from caves. And from caves in the Orchard Dales National Park, we've got seven sites with lynx. Lynx is very rare, partly because the bones are not that big. <laughs> this is the lower jaw, the mandible of an adult lynx, and you see the characteristic cat teeth here. And these are from early excavations, and they were correctly identified at the time. This is here, I'll bring this one up. This is the front upper leg bone, a humerus, with this characteristic opening here. This cats all have this. Uh, and they're different to a dog, a dog doesn't have this. So all these were correctly identified when they were found, but not precisely dated. So how old do you think these are now? Well, until we had radiocarbon dating, we simply didn't know. And it was thought that they were very old. They were coming here at the end of the Ice Age and then disappeared because of climate change. When we started to date them, to our surprise, we find in the Yorkshire Dales are here in the Bronze Age from about 3,000 years ago. And they're here right through until the early medieval period, uh, about 1,400 years ago, the last one. And that wouldn't be the last one. We dated one uh, at about 1,400 years ago, and they could have continued after that. So it's remarkable, this long history, and also the fact they're in so many different locations around here. Should, should we go and have a look to see what sort of habitat they used to live in? Let's go and have a look. So Tom, you showed us an amazing collection of lynx bones. Uh, where actually did they come from? Well, four of the caves are within two miles that way on the other side of the valley, and two caves are less than a mile away there. So we're at the epicentre of, of these cave records. And there's another one over there too. So. And we've got two more on the sides of Ringleborough. So we've got um, several in the Yorkshire Dales uh, and only just over 20 for the whole of Britain. So, so why have you brought us here? Why have you brought us to this? Well, we're here, here because we've got to think about why have we got this concentration of links here? Is there something about the area that's attracting them? And, and what do you think the, the habitat was like when um, lynx were here? Well, now we're starting to get a handle on their dating when they're here. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got dates showing lynx are here from uh, uh, around uh, 3,000 years ago. We've got dates, so we'll be here earlier, but 3,000 years ago, right through into the early medieval period, about 1,400 years ago. And that's bringing us into a time when we can start to reconstruct the historic landscape. And this is something like, I think, the landscape would have been when we had the links here. And this, and this is um, coppice, you can see there's some hazel down here uh, and standards uh, and hawthorn. So it's a sort of open, open habitat with coppicing. Is that right? The, name for this area is the hags. The hags is an old Norse dialect word for a uh, wooded area that is being managed possibly for coppice uh, and we've got this ancient trackway coming up here this is... which suggests livestock were brought up and down through this area but confined and so... then they're brought to the higher ground when where there is summer grazing. So there's, there's a, you can see the external wall here, but as I understand it, there was another wall here. There would so be they... some device here to coral uh, the livestock in. So and this... that's to stop cattle from going, or livestock from going yeah. out and eating the coppice. Yeah, and... And, and this is part of a totally obsolete livestock system. Uh, it's very different to what we have today. Um, but we're left here with a sense of an open, uh, wooded landscape, uh, relic wood pasture, but wood pasture where you have areas of more intensive use. And wood pasture is shared, I think, 
by people and links for a considerable period of time. So that's, this I think is really fascinating because when we, when we think of the habitat of the lynx, we think of it being places where no one is living, very isolated, remote areas. And what you're saying is it's likely that for substantial periods of time, humans and lynx were very much living in the same landscape. Well, the dates for the lynx are telling us that the lynx are in the landscape with people and there's something about this landscape that is being used by both people and lynx and I think it would be areas like this, natural areas of open woodland which are being managed by people as wood pasture and this provides open spaces for uh, prey of lynx, roe deer and also places where they can hide because lynx are ambush hunters. So the, so the closed, we, people often think of it as being closed habitat, to, uh, but it, I think what you're saying is the closed habitat, closed woodland isn't very good for lynx or the associated prey, except for somewhere to go and hide. This would be a very diverse habitat. There would be areas on the cliffs and steeper ground, or possibly closed canopy woodland, but then much larger areas of open woodland, so places the lynx can retreat to and hide away in but places they can hunt as well. This is um, absolutely fascinating and uh, I think certainly changes my, my understanding of the habitat of the lynx. That's yeah. really interesting. Well, this lynx record is not a record of lynx in wilderness. I think it's telling us that people and lynx coexisted for a considerable period of time. Brilliant.